Good morning, Amazing Grace. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this beautiful summer day. We are so grateful for the wonderful weather and grateful to be able to worship our God together. We are in the season of Pentecost when we celebrate the Holy Spirit's movement in, around, and through us. Uh, and we are grateful that the Spirit calls us together as a community and sends us out as disciples. Please rise for our call to worship. Glory to you, O God, for creating the human race. And for endowing us with the mystery of your image. We praise you for people of every race, ability, age, sexuality, and gender. We adore you for people who lead and people who follow. To all the human family, make us a blessing. We exalt you, O God. Glory to you, O God. continue with our confession and then, then hearing God's words of forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that, that we have not followed your path, path but have chosen our own way. way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Save us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Now hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. We join together in the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, ruler of all, all hearts, you call us to obey, obey you, and you, and you favor, favor us with true freedom. freedom. Keep, Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We often think of 
being a Christian or holding Christian values as a matter of my own individual rightness or righteousness, my own purity and morality as an individual. But this is such an impoverished reading of the great gifts of the Spirit that Paul lays out before us today. You see, each of those words, each of those words are words designed to foster and nurture healthy relationship. We live in a world of fragmentation, a world where our relationships can experience so much estrangement and alienation, where we are divided from one another through so many things. And yet, in the midst of this very world, the Spirit is working love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. The Spirit is moving among us that we might be in healthy relationship with one another, with our neighbors who are different than us, with ourselves, with God, and with creation itself. And part of being in healthy relationship is listening, bearing with one another, hearing what God might have to say through people whom we least expect. This past week, the Supreme Court passed down a really big decision, essentially the end of Roe v. Wade in this country. Now I'm going to be vulnerable with you for a moment. I don't know yet how to talk to you about these things. I've only been here for eight months. We're still figuring each other out. But I do know that there's a lot of diversity of belief even within this congregation. I do know that Christians get wrongly lumped together in one category of political voting or another. I do know that I have been deeply misrepresented by the quote-unquote Christian community on many, many occasions. What I do know also is that people who find themselves right now in difficult situations face the risk of even more difficult situations. I do know that we are called to stand in compassion with those who are vulnerable and made more vulnerable by the world around them. I know that Christ stands with those who suffer and is doing so now. With these things in mind, we can commit ourselves to walking through changes and chances and disagreements and fear with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So for those who find themselves suffering right now, facing an uncertain future, know that Christ is with you. And Christ is with you because the Christian life is not about having an entirely unmessy life yourself. The Christian life is not about living in constant judgment of yourself or others. The Christian life is not about having a clear checklist of rights and wrongs that we tick off so that we can be made worthwhile in God's eyes. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, when Jesus was still walking the earth before he was crucified and raised, he came upon a village and he proclaimed his gospel. And many disciples were made in this village. They particularly loved a specific teaching that he passed on to them. Jesus said to them, If you are asked by a person to carry their pack for one mile, carry it for two. We, 2,000 years later, have this teaching written out in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. But we might miss what this teaching is all about. If a person asks you to carry their pack for one mile, carry it for two. You see, in this village, they experienced Roman occupying soldiers having to march through on many occasions. And by Roman law, soldiers could ask people within the villages to carry their packs for one mile. 
Jesus was telling this group that a way for them to, to, to display their faithfulness was to carry the pack for two. So this new word from Jesus, from God, became a law for the people in this dusty little village. As Roman soldiers would march through, the people would happily take the pack and carry their pack for two miles. They got a good reputation amongst the Roman soldiers. They really liked this. And so they would sometimes even go out of their way a little bit to go into this village to have those kind people carry their packs for a second mile. The people of this village were so pleased that God had given them this clear instruction by which they could live out their faith. And so for years they did it. Well, one day Jesus came back to this dusty little village. And he listened as the leader of the village gladly and joyfully shared that they had been faithfully carrying out his command, carry the packs for two miles. Lord, we have filled in all the right boxes. We have lived exactly as you told us to live. Jesus shook his head a little. And he said to the leader of this village, You have heard it said, carry the pack for two miles. But my law says, carry it for three. You see, the problem in this village was not just that they were following this law the way that they were following it. It's not that they weren't doing enough. The problem in this village was that they were taking this invitation to show generosity and turning it into a law. Turning it into a law. Something they could put on a checklist and tick off and say, we've done it. We are now worthy of God's care and attention. We are getting it right. Friends, brothers and sisters, we are a people who love a checklist. We really do. I, in particular, am radically in love with checklists. They are all over my life. If you find a scrap of paper in my house, there is a strong chance that there is a checklist on it. And why do we love checklists? Well, because it gives us a sense of control, or at least it does for me. It means that I have some order in my life, that I can control the future in some small way. So often we take this desire for control and wrongly put it toward our faith and religion, turning it into a simple checklist. If you vote the right way, if you believe the right way, if you say the right words, if you pray the right prayer, if you have the right morals, if you never mess up at all, then you have fulfilled your duty and you are worthy of love and belonging in Christ. Brothers and sisters, the good news is that we are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace through faith. This is a free gift. Nothing that we ourselves can earn. Nothing that we can put on a checklist because that box has already been marked. That box has been marked by the blood of Jesus Christ who gave his life to free us from the sort of faith that keeps a ledger. You are acceptable and loved as you are. Because you are a child of God. Because God has imprinted his image upon you. Because Christ died and was raised from the dead so that you might live a new life. This is the gospel that the Apostle Paul preached to the Galatians. You are free. And we might push back and say, I mean, but we have to do something, right? We at least have to believe in the exact right way. We at least have to have all the right doctrines. We have to fill out that heavenly SAT test and make sure we get the bubbles completely filled in so that the machine can count them correctly. There has to be some mechanism to salvation. But the great good news is that that mechanism was crucified with Christ. Brothers and sisters, you are free. Do not take up again the yoke of slavery believing that you have to do something to earn this. 
Paul preached this message to the Galatians. For freedom Christ has set you free. Do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. He preached this message to the Galatians because they were taking on a yoke of slavery once again. They had received this message of God's free grace with open hands and excited hearts. And then, a few years later, some other folks came into this town. Now, Galatia was a Gentile area. And at the time, there was a disagreement in the church. Did you have to be Jewish ethnically first? in order to receive the grace of Jesus Christ. It's the Gentile and Jewish divide that we see play out in the New Testament. We have our own divides today. Do you have to be of a particular sexual orientation? Do you have to be of a particular race? Do you have to be of a particular gender in order for Jesus' love to be available to you? For freedom, Christ has set you free. Do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. This Gentile community became convinced that they would have to follow the laws that would make them in some way Jewish. That would make them in some way followers of the law. Chief among these was circumcision. The people had to be circumcised according to some of these new teachings in order to be worthy of God's love. It was a way of mandating another person's body and telling them what they had to do in order to be worthy of God's love. We cut out a portion of chapter 5. Did you notice that today? Okay. This might be earmuffs time for little kids because Paul gets a little blue here. All right? The part that we cut out, the reason we cut it out is because Paul is so upset that people are willing to say that there are things that you have to do in order to earn God's grace, that he says, I wish that they would go even further and castrate themselves. Terrible, horrible imagery. That's not me. That's the Bible. That's the Apostle Paul saying this. This is a radical message that he preaches with clear rage. Because he is so passionate about ensuring that the people of this town and that you and I hear the message clearly. Grace is free. What Christ did is enough. Faith is not about keeping a checklist. It's not about getting it all right. It's about trusting in Jesus Christ who loves you and gave himself for you. It's about actually believing somewhere deep inside that when you look in the mirror, you see someone who is worthy of love and belonging. It's about understanding that Christ's blood was shed for you and that that is enough. Brothers and sisters, you are enough. You've been given life by the Spirit, and so let us now be guided by the Spirit and proclaim this word of freedom. Thanks be to God. Amen.
confess our faith. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the Church, the creation, and all in need. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. Bless farmers and fishers and all who care for the conservation of your world. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of peace, guide all who govern that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of kindness, Reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or suffering in body, mind, or spirit, especially those whom we name before you. <clears throat> Uphold those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace. God of love. Attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward help, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. God of grace, we pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the effects of the recent Supreme Court decision. We pray for the areas of our world that suffer from earthquake, flood, fire, and wind. We pray that our faith, hope, and trust might be strengthened in this and in the coming days. God of grace, God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We please turn to one another and share a sign of peace. We have a God whose generosity goes beyond anything we could ask or imagine, who gives us good gifts so that we can care for one another and our community together. Right now, during our time of offering, I ask that you take some time to reflect about how God might use you and your gifts to further God's mission in the world. We give in the style of our Tanzania brothers and sisters. We have a partner church in Tanzania. And so as you come forward, if you have a physical gift to give today, you can place it in the basket. Otherwise, as a symbol of the gift of yourself, you can dip your fist in and bring it back out as well.
harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Blessed are you, O God most high. We give you thanks for your holy covenant, your promise to Abraham, your mercy to the house of David, your word spoken through the prophets and your beloved son, the dawn of our salvation. We praise and magnify you, O God. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ, for giving Savior, merciful Lord. We trust in your tender compassion. You are the good Samaritan, we the wounded traveler. You are the sweeping woman, we the lost coin. You ate with Mary, Martha, and Zacchaeus. And you filled Emmaus with your resurrection. We praise and magnify you, O God. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he poured it out for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood that is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. For this meal and for your presence within it, we, we praise, praise and magnify you, O God. God. Blessed are you, Holy Spirit, power of the Most High. As you came to Mary, come to us and to this meal. Welcome us home, that together we may feast on your love. Feed us with the body of Christ, that we may be holy and righteous before you. Heal us, that with Tabitha we may rise to serve those in need. Send us into all the world like Paul, preaching the power of your peace. We, we praise and magnify you, O God. God. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, on, on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today, today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Now Christ himself has set a place at this table for each and every one of us. So whether you're Lutheran or not, whether you are a member of this congregation or not, you are invited to come and receive the great gifts of Jesus' body and blood for you. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the bank.
grace and peace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just a couple announcements as we head out on our way. First, following service today, following service today, there will be a training for those who are interested in um, ushering or helping with communion, our altar care, as I understand it. Altar care. So, let me tell you, being part of the worship preparation group here is actually quite enjoyable. I've worked at a lot of churches, and it's unique to enjoy it. So, <laughs> you are more than welcome to come and at least learn what goes into it from Jeannie. Jeannie, where will you be meeting? Uh, actually, we're meeting for Zoom, but we won't be meeting now until August. Oh my gosh, I'm all sorts of wrong. Okay. Second Monday in August, there's a training. So even better, you can plan ahead to no, be here. No, that, no, training for ushering and that is after service today. Oh my word. Okay. But if you're talking about actually finding out about the training, that is going to be happening after service today. All right. So pretend I didn't say anything. So here is the new announcement. <laughs> the new announcement is after worship today, there is a training for altar care and ushering. Uh, in August, you can learn all about the worship arts here, okay? So because there is the training after worship also, I wanna encourage people to come to that. Uh, so we won't be holding our normal conversation after worship. We've done that for a few weeks now. It's been enjoyable. You can uh, see me again next week and we'll, we'll get together and talk about the text and other questions that you might have. Um, two other announcements, one, and this is a, a date that is hard and solid and fast, and so I won't get it wrong. July 10th, mark your calendars to be here if you are in town, because we will have a very exciting guest speaker from China Service Ventures uh, named Hosanna, who will be here to preach, and then we'll be leading a, uh, a short class after the service to talk a little bit about our partnership with China Service Ventures there. And the final announcement is, there were some words in uh, today's sermon that children might have questions about. I do not leave parents on their own for that. So, if your child, you at home too, if your child has questions about any of the words you all heard in the sermon today, please reach out and I will be happy to work with you and your kids to talk about those words. Okay. With that, receive this blessing. Why don't we stand for the blessing as well? The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Our, sen our sending hymn today is new. I've been throwing a few new ones here, but it's not from the hymn book. But when you hear the words, you'll know why we chose this one for today. It's very easy to learn because everything is repeated. So I will do it the first time, you do it with me the second time. I do want to call your attention to the uh, verse 1b. All that means is that we're doing the verse again. There's a little bit of a bap Baptist-ish uh, style there, and that is where the Spirit of the Lord is. You go, there is freedom, and I'm gonna let you practice. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And you'll know the verse by then, so you don't have to wait till the second time through to do that. And as we get through, you don't, you don't have to wait till the second time to join me. But um, thank, thank goodness for God's grace, because this will, this will be so wonderful as a result.